What's going on guys, Sean Nalawani, seannell.com, realscienceathletics.com with another Q&A video here. Uh, this is part two where I'm answering some of your guys' fitness questions from over on my Instagram. Um, if you're not yet following me on Instagram, it's at Sean underscore Nalawani. Uh, make sure to check that out because I do post new content there every single day that you'll get a lot of value from. And if you do have questions of your own, you can go ahead and post them there and I'll do my best to help out. So I've got 10 more questions here. I'll timestamp them in the description box below and let's get into it. So the first question is, do you think tracking macros is really necessary or is it okay to just focus on total calories instead? So I would say that for most people in most situations, tracking all three macros right down to the exact figure probably won't be necessary. Okay, you don't need to precisely track macros to build muscle and lose fat effectively. Uh, it's usually not sustainable for most people over the long term and trying to count and balance everything out in terms of every single gram of protein, carbs, and fats that goes into your mouth every single day will likely just overcomplicate your diet and make your day-to-day -day eating plan more stressful overall. Now, if you're competing um, or you're just going through a temporary phase where you're really trying to get a handle on your nutrition and learn the ropes with things, or if you're someone who just thrives on organization and you don't find tracking macros to be stressful, then that's fine. But I'd say that all in all, tracking overall calories is usually enough and then just making sure that you're hitting your daily protein minimum. So that's gonna be about 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, um, which is pretty easy to do and a good percentage of people will usually just get that amount in without even needing to specifically try. So total calories should be the main focus. Uh, calories absolutely do matter, so make no mistake about that. You do need to be in a calorie deficit if you wanna lose body fat and if you're in a focused bulking phase, then you need to be in a calorie surplus as well. And eventually, after you've built up a foundation with your physique and you have some decent experience under your belt when it comes to caloric tracking, then you can start moving on to a more intuitive style of eating where you're just estimating things throughout the day without specifically needing to track the numbers. I think that um, intuitive eating should be the ultimate long-term goal for most people, but you do have to put in the time and effort first in order to learn how to do that properly rather than just going straight into an intuitive style of eating right from the get-go. Okay, next question. Are low carb diets effective for losing fat? I've talked to a lot of people who went the low carb route and saw great results and I'm thinking of trying it out myself. Uh, the main reason why some people do have success when they switch over to a low carb approach isn't because carbs are inherently fattening, but it's just the simple fact that when you significantly reduce the intake of an entire macronutrient, your total calorie intake is also gonna go down as a result because just like protein and fat, carbs contain calories. So if you take a person who regularly eats calorie dense, refined, high carb foods like uh, you know bagels, granola bars, muffins, sugary drinks, things like that, and then they go ahead and cut those foods out and they start eating more uh, protein and vegetables, it's pretty obvious that they're gonna start losing weight. They're eating less total calories and now that they're eating more protein and more total food volume relative to their calories, they're gonna be fuller and they're gonna have better appetite control. But specific macronutrient breakdowns aside, creating a calorie deficit is still the ultimate bottom line when it comes to fat loss. So if for some reason you prefer eating lower carb and you feel mentally and physically fine with that approach, um, then you can certainly go that route. But at the end of the day, carbs are not detrimental to fat loss when total calories are equated. And most people will probably do better on at least a moderate carb intake in terms of their gym performance, their mood, and just not feeling overly restricted in general. All right, I've been cutting for four months. I've dropped 20 pounds. I'm down to about 12% body fat and I'm fairly lean all over, but I still have a thin layer of fat on my lower abdomen that I can't seem to get rid of. Is it just a matter of continuing to push the deficit or is there anything else that will help? The simple answer is that, yeah, it really is just a matter of continuing to maintain a calorie deficit. And if your body weight is plateaued for a good one to two weeks and you aren't seeing any visual improvements or any changes in your measurements, then it just comes down to decreasing your calories slightly or adding in some more activity or doing a combination of both to get that deficit going again. There aren't any special secrets and the reality is that it just gets harder to lose fat the leaner you get. Now that said, you should also keep in mind that even if you are really lean overall, it's still pretty normal to have at least a little bit of fat still hanging around on that uh, lower stomach area. Even the people you see on YouTube or over on Instagram who appear to have this perfectly flat rock hard stomach all the time, usually still have some fat on their lower ab area, but you just don't see it because all the pictures are taken flexed or partially flexed and using the best angles and lighting and also usually from a standing position. But when you're 
sitting down, it's pretty normal to have that last little roll of fat that kind of bunches up and sits there. And most people do have that unless they're extremely lean. So it's okay to want to be lean, but being perfectly lean everywhere all the time isn't realistic for the vast majority of people. And if you're just an average lifter who wants to be in great shape, but you're not competing, it might not even be worth it for you to drop your overall body fat levels further just to get that last little bit of fat loss on that one tiny area of your body. So that's something that you'll need to weigh out for yourself. Okay, next question. Do you think multivitamins are a worthwhile supplement? I always hear conflicting views on this. I already eat pretty healthy, so I don't know if I should bother. Uh, if you're eating a minimally processed whole food based diet, you're getting in your fruits and veggies, then yeah, a typical full spectrum multivitamin isn't something that I'd recommend because you're already going to be covering a good percentage of your micronutrient needs as is and going too high on certain micros can actually be detrimental to your health. And in the case of something like vitamin C or vitamin E, it could even be directly detrimental to muscle growth. So. Rather than just aimlessly supplementing with every single vitamin and mineral out there, it's much better to just selectively focus in on the ones that most people don't get optimal amounts of, um, which would be things like vitamin D and vitamin K, and the ones that hard training lifters also tend to benefit from, especially if they sweat a lot, which would be uh, zinc and magnesium. Those specific micros are important for testosterone production, mental functioning, uh, mood, bone health, and supplementing with them can be helpful as a way to round out your overall diet and make sure that everything is fully on point because even with good nutrition, you might still end up falling short of the optimal amounts. And that was the approach that I took with the Real Science Athletics product MicroCore, which was to only include the select few vitamins and minerals that you'll actually benefit from and then to eliminate all the ones that you either don't need or that are potentially harmful. And I genuinely think that this is a much better approach than 99% of what's out there in this category. And you can click up here uh, or down in the description box to check that out um, or just visit realscienceathletics.com. Uh, Microcore combined with a good nutrient dense whole food diet, that's gonna be your best overall approach when it comes to a multivitamin supplement. Okay, I've been out of the gym for over a year due to personal reasons. I need to get back into it, but I have anxiety about going to the gym. What's the best way to get over this? Pretty straightforward answer, but ultimately the best way to get over it is to just go to the gym. You know, you can really only think your way out of anxiety to a limited degree and actually sometimes thinking more about it will only make you more anxious. So you really just have to go ahead and expose yourself to whatever it is that's making you anxious and gradually uh, desensitize yourself to it. Usually we build things up in our heads and turn them into a much bigger deal than they actually are. But once you just go ahead and do it, most of the time it's nowhere near as bad as you thought. Keep in mind that most people in the gym really don't care what the other people around them are doing and everyone is really just sort of in their own world and focused in on themselves for the most part. So there's really no need uh, to be anxious about going to the gym. And this advice applies to most things in life. You can't really force yourself to feel confident just by thinking about something. Usually the confidence only comes after you've done the thing that you were nervous about in the first place. So most of the time you just have to plunge in and force yourself to do it. And over time you'll gradually become less and less nervous. Or what will happen is that the physical nervousness in your body won't change that much, but your mental interpretation of the nervousness will. So you'll still Still feel nervous on a physical level but the nervousness won't phase you and you'll just be able to go ahead and do the thing that you were setting out to do even with that nervousness still there next question I'm bulking and sometimes I have trouble hitting my surplus for the day would it be okay to use a weight gain powder to help out with this uh, for the most part, most typical commercial weight gain powders are really just whey protein mixed with simple sugar, usually maltodextrin. So if your diet is otherwise fairly clean and on point and you're just using a moderate amount to help bump your calories up further, um, then that could be an option. But I think a much better option is to just go ahead and make your own shake at home using whole food ingredients. That way you can get the extra calories that you need, but also the added micronutrients and fiber. Um, I used to do this back in the day when I was heavier and when I was eating much higher calories. Uh, my standard recipe was two scoops of protein powder, milk, banana, oats, peanut butter, and then to uh, raise the calories up higher, I'd add in some sort of healthy oil like flaxseed oil or olive oil, and sometimes yogurt um, or even ice cream. Uh, blend that all up and you can easily get in 800 to 1200 calories plus um, if you really need it, and it'll make hitting your overall calorie goal for the day a lot easier. All right. I'm very active and I currently play basketball three to four times a week for an hour, plus have a physically demanding job. Can I still make gains or will it be too hard for me given how active I already am? Yeah, you can definitely still build muscle effectively in that situation, but there are a few steps that you'll wanna follow here if you're someone who is highly active outside of weight training. So first off, you're obviously burning a lot of extra calories throughout the week, so you're gonna to need to pay attention to your food intake to make sure that you are replacing all of the calories 
that you're burning and getting yourself into a net calorie surplus on top of it. So make sure to monitor the scale because if it's going down or if it's staying the same, then that means that you're not in a calorie surplus currently and that you need to eat more. And about two pounds of overall weight gain per month, um, that would be a pretty standard rate of weight gain for a beginner. Uh, secondly, I would say don't go overboard on weight training volume. So all the activity that you're already doing is gonna impact your recovery to some degree. So you don't wanna then go ahead and add in five or six days of weight training per week on top of that, uh, because most likely you'll have issues with recovery. So I'd say to just go with a simple three day per week plan. That's easily enough to make great gains and it will help to prevent the chances of overtraining. And also this probably goes without saying, but don't bother performing any additional gym cardio on top of what you're doing now, because the sports you're playing and having a physical job on top of it, that's already gonna be enough to cover your weekly cardio needs and going and running on the treadmill in addition to that is probably just gonna be counterproductive. But the bottom line is that if you eat enough total calories and protein, uh, you keep your weight training volume on the moderate side, you limit additional cardio, uh, and also make sure that your sleep is on point. That's important too. Um, you can definitely still make great gains even if you're pretty active outside of weight training. Um, it might not be 100% optimal, but it should be pretty close to it if you execute everything properly. Okay, next question. What do you think about intermittent fasting? Are there any particular benefits or is it just hype? Uh, intermittent fasting is a perfectly acceptable way to structure your diet. And for some people, it can be a better approach in comparison to a standard evenly spaced out meal frequency. But it's by no means some sort of magical fat loss solution like some people uh, try to promote. And it also doesn't work by boosting your actual metabolic rate or creating some sort of special environment in your body that causes you to directly burn more fat. If you look at the research that compares intermittent fasting to continuous energy restriction, there isn't any significant difference between the two if total calories are equated for the day. Uh, losing fat is ultimately about maintaining a net calorie deficit, and for some people, if they restrict their eating window down to just eight hours a day or even less than that, they just end up eating fewer calories overall and they can maintain their deficit more easily that way. So IF is just one potential option to experiment with and it can improve dietary adherence in some people. So if you're in a situation where you're having a tough time controlling your appetite or you just prefer the simplicity of eating a couple big meals per day rather than eating a bunch of small meals all throughout the day, then intermittent fasting is definitely something that you could experiment with with to see how it works for you. Next question, I track my intake and my calories are fairly low right now, only 1800 per day. I'm pretty sure I'm in a deficit but I'm not dropping any weight on the scale. What could be the problem here? Well, the bottom line is that if you are on a quote unquote low calorie diet but you aren't losing any body weight, then that's basically a guarantee right there that your calories aren't actually as low as you think they are. Uh, you could be making measurement errors throughout the day. There could be little snacks and liquids that are sneaking in without you realizing it. Uh, restaurant meals that are higher calorie than you think. Weekend cheat days and cheat meals that you're not properly accounting for. The bottom line is that most people on average way under report their calorie intake and they over report their activity level. And I've seen this countless times throughout my coaching experience and the research also pretty clearly shows this as well. So chances are that like a lot of people out there, you're just eating more than you realize. And given that a standard calorie deficit for fat loss is only about 500 calories below maintenance, it doesn't take much in terms of tracking errors to really cut that number down significantly or remove it altogether. And also remember that this is about your average calorie intake for the week as a whole. So if you go really high on calories on the weekend, for example, that can easily erase the deficit that you created during the regular week. So my suggestion for you is that you go through and do a careful and precise dietary audit by tracking every single bite of food and every liquid that you consume throughout every single day because that's gonna allow you to see how much you're truly taking in and it will allow you to make the proper adjustments from there. All right, and last question, a bit of a more random one here, but thoughts on NoFap. So uh, I guess that depends on exactly what you mean by no fap, whether that means just not watching porn or not fapping at all or just fapping less often. So let me answer each one of those individually. So when it comes to the question of porn, I would say that all in all, I'm pretty much of the mindset at this point that for most people out there, uh, there are always gonna be exceptions, but for most guys in most situations, I think that your life will be better overall if you don't watch porn. Um, I think when used in excess, it is overstimulating. I think it decreases your social motivation in real life and even just your motivation in general. And for some guys, it can even lead to legitimate sexual dysfunction. Um, I think as with most things in life, 
The devil is in the dosage. So if you were to only watch it once in a while, like say once a week or every couple weeks, something like that, I'm sure it probably wouldn't be a big issue. But the problem is that because porn is so addictive for most people, it's a very hard thing to just use in moderation. And so usually eliminating it completely is going to be the best overall approach. As far as just fapping in general is concerned, I don't think the whole extreme no fap thing is really necessary, like going months on end without it. Um, if you want to do that as some sort of personal challenge or as like a mental reset, um, then that could make sense. But it's not really practical or sustainable as an overall lifestyle for most guys out there, uh, I don't think. Uh, but I do think that reducing your fapping frequency, let's call it, I do think that that can be beneficial. Um, I don't think you should be doing it every single day um, or even every two days. Like with porn, I think it just has a general draining effect, uh, no pun intended, and that when you do it less, you will be more socially confident, you will feel more motivated, and you'll just feel better in general, I think. So I don't have like a prescribed frequency that I'm gonna recommend to you here, but. I would say that if you're doing it much more than once or twice a week, that you should perhaps make an effort to cut back and see what kind of an effect it has on you, because I predict that you'll probably find that the effect is a positive one overall. So there you have it guys, 10 more of your questions answered. Thanks a lot for watching the video. If you did find this Q&A helpful and you appreciate this straight ahead, no BS approach to fitness and you wanna learn the exact step-by-step -step methods that I recommend using in order for you to build muscle and lose fat as efficiently as possible, then make sure to take my physique quiz over at quiz.seannow.com because that'll get you started on the proper training and the proper nutrition plan that you need based on your individual goals, body type, and experience level. You can click up here for that or use the link in the description box below. When it comes to the supplementation side of things, you can also visit realscienceathletics.com to check out my research-backed clinically dosed formulas that I personally created to help improve the overall convenience and the effectiveness of your muscle building and fat loss plan. Link for that is also in the description. And of course, as always, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already in order to stay up to date on future videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.